Hello there and welcome back to the old school Iron Man. Last episode we got ourselves up to 60 crafting, got our Hasidious favor up to 100% and started exploring the farming guild. But at the same time we created ourselves a new problem. Our cash stack is 7.6k. Extremely low uh, and I wanted to get it higher but the problem right now is we don't have any mage levels so we don't have the ability to use the high alchemy spell. And I'm going to fix this by kind of killing two birds with one stone. And how I'm going to do this is the Mage Training Arena. It's called the Mage Training Arena, so we might as well train Mage there. But the plan is to get the points for Infinity Boots, Mage's Book, Master Wand, and Bones to Peaches. And if we do all of that, we should get ourselves up to 74, 75-ish Mage, which will help out a lot for quests in the future. Uh, we'll have a high mage level, we'll be able to clear through a whole bunch of quest bosses, and then eventually we'll get the Ivan's staff, and then we can blast through all of them. So I did the math on what I would need, and I need about 2.3k law runes, 5.5k uh, nature runes, and 2.8k cosmics. But what I'm going to do instead is get up to like a round number above it, so I have leftover runes after it to go do some spells like teleporting around the game, and I am missing a lot of teleports right now. We are going to be getting our cash with the Agility Pyramid. One little cool pro tip is this bush patch here that's right by the monastery and on your way to the fairy ring. Um, it's very convenient because you can put down a white berry bush here and never get rid of it. And then every time you teleport to the monastery, whether you want to go to a fairy ring, spirit tree, or whatever other reason you're coming to the monastery, you can come and grab the four to eight white berries that are on this push, note them with the lever cone, and then continue on what you're doing. If we do this, we probably won't have to manually go out and get white berries for probably the entire game, as that'll be enough to get us all the super defenses that we'll need. And the quickest way for us to get to the agility pyramid is the code DLQ that takes us just north of Narda, and we're able to run south to the pyramid. And then once we get to the pyramid, we just uh, run around the edge. We'll have to drink a uh, drink of water every once in a while. So that's why I bring these water skins. And I bring just enough that my weight stays under uh, negative. Because as long as you have negative weight, then your run energy doesn't go down at uh, like an advanced speed. Like ne for run energy purposes, like negative 2 and negative 30 are identical. And each time we get to the top of this pyramid, we get 10k. So you can see I've already done 37 laps. If we look here, uh, my pyramid lap count is 37. Semi AFK, I was probably getting about 20 per hour, I'd say. That's a good estimate. And because we're level 75 agility, we actually don't fail unless I'm stupid enough to click backwards on the obstacle. I've done that a couple times. And we want to get ourselves up to 2.5 mil cash to buy runes for MTA. So this is going to be our last pull of the pyramid. Uh, it's our 226 lap. I was originally going to go all the way up to 2.5 mil cash, but I did some math with the stock and everything, and it turns out that the runes are only going to cost two, just over 2 mil. It's like in between 2 and 2.1 mil if I did the math correctly. Um, so 100k left over should be more than enough, and then after that we can move on to Alking. Uh, but let's go to Mage Bank. So we made it to Mage Bank safely. This is one of the benefits of dying is we were able to travel to Mage Bank without worrying about anything. So our goal is going to be to buy 6,000 natures, 5,000 laws, and 3,000 cosmics. Um, and basically the plan is because there's only 20 cosmics per world, I'm going to try to buy 20 laws and 20 cosmics per world. But because we need double natures, we're going to try to buy 50 per world. Um, and when we buy 50 natures per world, it still is only like 189, and these base cost 180, so it's it's not a lot. It just means we're hopping the same amount of times for all the runes, so might as well save as much GP as possible. I also have menu entry swapper on, so when I hold down shift, it makes the left click option by 10 instead of having to right click by 10 or by 50. So it's it's so convenient, so I can just go boom, 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 boom. And now I can hop to the next world. And that's what we're going to be doing for the next probably hour I think it's going to take. 
And with this world, we are going to be done with runes. We have 6,000 natures, 2.5k laws, and 3,000 cosmics. This gives us enough uh, runes to finish all of MTA and have a little bit left over at the end. Um, we'll have a couple hundred of each, so if I need to alk some things, need to enchant some things, need to teleport some places, I all have some stored up in the bank still. But I was an idiot and completely forgot that we needed like 40,000 water runes to be able to actually uh, do all the spells because we're going to be eventually doing enchant dragonstone jewelry, uh, which takes water and earth runes, which we do not have a mud battle staff for. Then we're going to be doing bones to bananas, which also take water and earth runes, and same with bones to peaches. So I'm going to get an earth staff, but use up water runes. And if we have any water runes left over, I can just use them for barrage spells later. But this stock only has like 250 of each and like five water packs. But on other worlds, I can get like a full inventory at once. And it'll be a little more expensive to do it there, but it's so much better than having to hop. So I'm going to go to Varrock to finish us off. And here we have at the last of our water rune packs being open of 45,000. So we have 45,000 water runes, 6,000 natures, 2,500 laws, and 3,000 cosmics. I had like 2.25 mil before, so that was like just over 2 mil to purchase all of this and all of the runes for MTA. And we have a little bit of cash left over too, so that's nice. Uh, but let's get cracking and getting that mage level up. While we're in Varak, we're going to be buying a inventory of these garden pies. Uh, when you eat them, your farming level goes up three. And you can see we're currently level 62 farming. So that means when we drink it, we get up to 65. And if it shows here, yeah. So at 65, we have access to the mid-tier of the farming guild. And that also means we have the mid-tier of the farming contracts, which means we get better seeds and it just starts the whole snowball process of farming that much better so i'm just gonna hop and get a full inventory of these because that should last us from 62 to 65 eating a pie or two every time we need to go we need to go in there so here's the plan currently we can't actually take a medium contract but if we eat this garden pie and we talk to Guildmaster Jane again we can now take a medium contract because our farming level is boosted and what they want to do is a yew tree and Thankfully, I have a couple of yews in the bank, but this will take a while to grow. It's now the next morning. We're going to eat up another garden pie and go in here to check the health of our yew tree. Nice little 7k XP and 63 farming. And now we can go talk to Guildmaster Jane to get our medium contract. And we're going to pick up another medium contract. Uh, watermelons. Oh, I thought I had planted watermelons, but I changed it for snake grass. So that'll be an easy one to do because we have a lot of watermelon seeds in the bank. So it's time to start the mage training arena. While the rewards here aren't necessarily the best items in the game, the main reason why we're here is actually for the mage XP. Early mage levels suck. And getting a high mage level gives us access to teleports, uh, gives us access to being able to enchant jewelry and gives us easy kills on a lot of quest bosses when we're coming up and don't need to worry about focusing on magic training when we're done here. While we are here, we're also going to pick up some items that are, I guess, not the best, but good enough. So we're going to go all the way up to Master Wand, which means we need to buy the beginner, apprentice, teacher, Master Wand. We're also going to get the Infinity Boots so that when we eventually go to Cerberus, we already have those to be upgraded into the Mage Boots from there. And then we're also going to get the Mage's Book as a good offhand magic weapon. And then finally, the Bones to Peaches spell, which is what usually people go for. Like, they'll come here and they'll only get Bones to Peaches and then not worry about everything else. But I thought, screw it, let's get some Mage levels. We have the GP and it'll set us up for the future. So there are four rooms here. There's Telekinetic, Enchanters, uh, Alchemist, and Graveyard Room. And the Telekinetic Room uses Telekinetic Grab, which we have the level for. But the Alchemist Room, you really want to have high level alchemy, which is level 55. And the Enchanters Room, you want to have level 68 for Dragonstone Enchant. And the Graveyard Teleport, you want to make sure you have level 60. 
for bones to peaches and you also want to do it last so that when you're when you have the graveyard points to unlock bones to peaches you just go ahead and do bones to peaches and then you can do the rest with peaches and bananas instead of just having just bananas so we're going to start with telekinetic uh, that should get us the level to do alchemy and then alchemy is the best experience room so that should give us enough experience to get up to at least level 68 for dragonstone where we can then go into the enchanter's room and then when we're at the end we'll go to graveyard 1300 telekinetic points coming up so it's been just about an hour and we've gotten 180 point down and we gained 28k experience six to seven more hours let's get it and that's 55 magic so we could at this point leave the telekinetic room and go to do the alchemy room but we got about 420 ish more points to go um so we have to do another like 100 plus puzzles here and um the xp per hour here is about 25k per hour it's not great um it'd be much faster if i did something else like teleporting to camelot but we're getting shit done while we're here so you get two points per maze and then every time you do five in a row you get a bonus eight points so like a five round cycle is a total of 18 points so you get on average 3.6 per and we need to get up to 1300 points total i think we'll get to like 57 58 probably by the time uh, we're out of here i think that's probably a good estimate of our level had to do 362 in total to get these uh 1300 points and i've been doing it the lazy way there's a quick way quicker way of doing it where you have walk on and then you select to run only when you need to run so that way you have energy for the whole way um but i was lazy and didn't feel like clicking on my keyboard and my mouse um which makes me think like if i did have the action bar uh like we do in rs3 i probably would have keybound like telekinetic grab to like a or x or some like convenient key that i could just rest on and then i could just hit that button and then click instead of having to like drag my mouse all the way back every single time the telekinetic grab but yeah two more casts and then we're gonna get out of here we got up to level 58 uh, and i think we started at 37 when we came in here it was like a total of 200k 210k experience and it was about eight hours i would say uh but there we are 1300 points now it's quite late for me so i'm going to go to bed but tomorrow we are going to go and deal with the alchemy room the alchemy room is going to be great because it's going to give us a lot more xp per hour it's actually pretty insane xp per hour for our level um, but the downside is we're going to be spending a lot of nature runes. Oh, and I completely forgot to mention we started with 2.5k law runes and we now have 200 left. I definitely messed up some casts. You can see as we scroll up in the chat, the statue won't move. You don't stand at the corners for clicking one square. Probably did that like 50 to 100 times. So that was wasted casts. So 2.2 to 2.3k laws used i think is a great estimate for getting your 1300 points so it's the next morning and it's time to start the alchemy room um this is a pretty interesting room because uh it's actually the best xp per hour the general idea with the alchemy room is that you want to take one item after every alk as you're able to in the cooldown period. Fill up your inventory with two to three of each of the items as a buffer so when the 30 GP item swaps you can start alking the new item and every time it swaps you move in front of the 30 GP uh, post and it swaps about every 45 seconds and this way you're always alking and you're almost always alking a 30 GP item. And then whenever we get above 10,000 coins, we go ahead and deposit here. I missed by, I'm supposed to be over 10k. I guess the last alc didn't go through, but you get one pizzazz point for every 100 coins you drop in. So we would have got 100 if we had rounded up to 10k, but we accidentally dropped in at 9.9. .9. But I have to do that a total of 15 times uh to get up to the 1500 points we need uh and each one of these takes about 20 minutes so that'll be about five hours of uh elk in here and this is going to be our very last elk gonna get us over 10k coins 
And now when we deposit in the coin collector, we're going to get 100 more points up to 1500 and a 20,000 XP drop. From this room, we got up to level 71. Uh, and we have two rooms left. We have the Enchanter Room and the Graveyard Room. But we're going to go ahead and do the Enchanter's Room next. In this room, we need 14,000 points. So there's one shape that is bonus, which means you get more points. We get seven per if it's the bonus and five per if it isn't. I'm going to go to the shape after each trip. Like when I go to the middle, I'll go to the red shape now. But I'm not going to make an effort to like go every time it changes. That makes sense because we're here mostly for the mage xp so we might as well do as many casts as possible and then we get a full inventory and we deposit in the hole you can actually drop all of these if you want to uh, but this way we get blood runes back and some cosmics so it's uh good to just drop in the middle so it's been pretty much like two hours to the dot i think it was like two hours and 10 seconds to get these fourteen thousand points uh, but we can go ahead and deposit so I said, like, even though it's uh, like the points were a lot, we get so many points per hour that it doesn't matter. Now we're out of here and we only have the graveyard room to work. So if we look at the rewards golem, the graveyard points that we need to unlock bones to beaches is 200. But the total amount of points we need is still 1300. Um, so that means we are going to get the first 200. We're going to come up here. We're going to buy bones to peaches. The strategy here is we grab bones in our inventory and we cast bones to banana and we deposit the food. And every 16 bones we deposit, uh, we get a certain amount of points. And we can look in the bottom corner to see how many bones we have bank, quote unquote banked. And then we can just do this over and over again. And that is 200 points in the graveyard room. And we can go buy our bones to peaches. So here we are. We have the 200 telekinetic, 2000 enchantment, 200 graveyard, and 300 alchemist. Confirm purchase. We now have the ability to use the bones to peaches spell. Now the reason why this is so good for the graveyard room is currently we're using bones to bananas. But each banana only heals 2 HP. But peaches heal a lot more. I forget exactly how much, but I think it's like nine. It's it's a really it's a really large number in comparison. So that means we no longer actually need to bring our own food here. Whenever we need to heal, we'll use bones to peaches instead of bones to bananas. And that means we have more inventory slots, so we can deposit 22 fruits at once instead of like 16 to 22 based on how much food we have left. And we also don't need to do any more trips. I'm just going to heal for one last time at the Surgeon. And because we're relatively low HP at 32, it's actually fairly annoying to uh, go back and like get five or six lobsters and then rinse, repeat. So we shouldn't have to leave the area until we're done. So now we're down to uh, like 13 HP. So we're going to go ahead and do Bones to Peaches on this inventory instead. We do bones to peaches and now yeah we heal eight hp per we can just eat the three peaches and then deposit the fruit there it is 1100 points we can get out of here uh, i think this was the worst room <laughs> yeah uh between the four of them i think my favorite was actually the telekinetic which is weird because like people seem to hate that one the most but the telekinetic room was the longest then next up was the alchemist just it was a lot of fun to like do the rotation and like the better you got you could really see it um show enchanters was pretty good but like eh but you can afk it if you want so i rushed through it but if you wanted to afk it it's it's not that bad and then graveyard is by far the worst and made me want to stop doing mta but in the end, we got up to 73 magic, which gives us a good host of spells. On the normal spell book, we basically have all the useful teleports. At least we have the magic level for it. We might need to unlock them in other ways, like with the Trollheim teleport. And we also got up to uh, wave spells if we ever need to like, do some hard combat. On top of that, we got up to Dragonstone Enchanting Jewelry at level 68. So that means when we get our glory, when we get a Ring of Wealth, when we get our combat bracelet when we get our skills necklace we can enchant them right away um though we will have to get the dragon stones and the crafting level for it now if we come into the shop let's not fuck this up 
Also, there's one thing I want to mention. This hat, I think, got lighter. I don't know if I'm going crazy, but it looks like it's a lot brighter than when it started. Then we're going to buy the Infinity Boots and Mage's Book. Now, one other thing I do want to mention is this Mud Rune and this Lava Rune. Uh, we can craft them ourselves if we get our rune crafting up, but we're going to need these for quests. So when I do actually need those for quests, we're actually going to have to come back here for a little bit. Um, so that'll be fun, and I'm not going to worry about getting the points now. It's not a lot of points, so I'll just go get it um, when I need it for the quest. But we have the Master Wand, the Infinity Boots, and the Mage's Book. You can see their stats here, 20 attack and defense, 7 attack and defense, and 5 attack and defense for magic. And with our now higher magic level, we can get around the map a lot better. And this is especially important for farming. There are 9 herd patches in the game. Uh, but three of which we don't have unlocked yet because we don't have the Making Friends with My Arm quest and My Arm's Big Adventure. Uh, those two quests each unlock a herb patch and we don't have those done. And then also the Elite Mauritania Diary unlocks another patch. So we only have six available to us right now. And we have convenient teleports to five of them right now. So this is going to be our herb run set up for now. I'm going to try to do as many of these as I can per day. Uh, at each patch, we're going to plant a limpwort in the flower patch. And for now, Herolander seeds, I'm going to keep a minimum of five seeds in the bank. Um, so for farming contracts, we always have uh, seeds, but I'm just working my way up the chain of the seeds we have. We'll definitely use herb seeds faster than we get them at this point. And because we have 50% Hasidious Favor, we actually have a 0% chance of disease happening on this patch. So once we get enough seeds from farming contracts, we're going to be layering this area with Snapegrass seeds. And that's going to be our main way to get Snapegrass for prayer potions. The Arty Cloak will be an upgrade on this teleport uh, eventually once we get it. But we don't have 59 smithing because you need that to complete the medium tasks. So once we get that, we'll swap over to using the teleport, which puts you like right on this square. Doing all these teleports for the first time and we get like so many medium tasks done. Great. So there is 65 farming, uh, which means that we now have access to the mid gear of the farming guild without having to boost. So I don't need to worry about eating a garden pie every time I want to enter there, which is quite nice. And we'll save the rest of the pies we have for when we're 85. Um, or for when we're 82 and we want to boost up to 85 to get into the high tier area. So that's going to be the end of the episode. We spent a lot of time this episode, notably 12 hours at Agility Pyramid to get the GP for runes, and then another 20 or so hours to actually use those runes at MTA, all while doing some farming in the background to get up to 65 for those medium contracts. Those medium contracts are going to be big because they lead to a lot more herb seeds, and we can start farming those herb seeds quite easily with all the teleports we have. That's going to get us some nice potions when our herb lore level gets up. Beyond that, next episode, I want to focus back on questing, as ever since we left Winter Todd, we really haven't done much questing, and we're now ready to get back into it. I'm going to sit here and get the 2k-ish logs that we still need for 89 Hunter while I edit the first couple episodes. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like down below. It really helps the channel and pushing out the series to more people. Take care, and I'll catch you in the next one.